This is the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, NCA. The President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, addresses the nation. Mr. President. My fellow Nigerians, let me begin by congratulating all of us for witnessing the celebration of another Democracy Day today, the 12th day of June 2024. This year also marks our nation's 25 years of uninterrupted democratic governance. On this day, 31 years ago, we entered our rites of passage to becoming a true and enduring democratic society. Going through this passage was hard and dangerous. During the fateful six years that followed, we fought and struggled for our natural rights as human beings put on this earth by the divine hand of our creator. We lost great heroes and heroines along the way. And this struggle, the winner of June 12, 1993 presidential election, Chief MKO Abiola, the most significant symbol of our democratic struggle, his wife, Kudrat, General Sheo Musa Yadua, and Pa Alfred Iwani, amongst others, sacrificed their very lives. They briefly surrendered their fortunes so that our nation might have a better one. Let us honor the memories of Chief Anthony Enahol, Chief Abram Adesaya, Commodore Dan Sulama, Chief Athon Wanko, Chief Chekwemeka Ezebe, Admiral Ndubusi Kanu, Chief Frank Kokori, Chief Bolaige, Chief Adekunle Ajasin, Chief Gani Udaudu, Chief Ayo Fasami, Chief Gani Fawemi, Chief Olabi Idrojaye, Dr. Beko Ransom Kuti, Chima Ubani, and others who have transited to higher realm. The sacrifices of General Alani Akinriade, Professor Bolaji Akemi, Professor Wole Shuinga, Chief Rav Obioha, Chief Colonel Adebayo, among many others, should never be forgotten. For at least six years, they bore the pain and difficulties of life in exile. While the exile pro-democracy activists kept the fire burning. Their comrades at home sustained the pressure on military leadership. Among the latter are Olisa Agbakoba, Femi Falana, Abdu Oro, Senator Shewsoni, 
governor Obasan, Shivolu Falai, and other National Democratic Coalition leaders, such as Chief Ayo Adebanjo and Chief Ayo Padokun. The sacrifices they made and the precious gift brought about by their selfless devotion can never be repaid nor forgotten. We could not have won the battle against dictatorship without the irrepressible Nigerian journalists who mounted the barricades along with the pro-democracy activists. We celebrate them today along with their media establishments such as The Punch, The Guardian, National Concord, Tribune, The News and Tempo, and Tell Magazines. The undemocratic government of the day proscribed these media establishments and jailed their journalists for standing for free speech and civil liberties and the sanctity of the June 12th elections. That's why the leather might of the authoritarian government, what appeared to be high and unyielding walls of dictatorship came tumbling down. The dismal fortress exists no longer. The power of an idea, the power of the people proved more potent than all the guns, the munitions, and the threat of the strong men. The nation exceeded the yoke of dictatorship in 1999 to become the most populous democracy on African soil, the beacon of democratic self-determination for the black race and one of the long largest democracies in the world. This change stands as a pivotal moment in human history. From this change, we shall never turn, nor shall honors of mankind's progress Forget the sublime meaning of this great moment. Today, 25 years later, we celebrate the silver anniversary of our journey in democracy. We have studied the course. Democracy is neither a foreign nor abstract concept devoid of real life meaning for us. Neither can we afford to reduce or minimize it to being nothing but the mere holding of periodic elections where one candidate and party are do another. While elections attract democratic attention, they are but one aspect of democracy. Democracy is a way of life that encompasses a broad outlook of which elections are but a part. As such, a nation can have elections without being democratic, but a nation cannot be truly democratic without holding elections. That we have established a tradition of holding transparent, open and fair elections gives credence to our democratic standing, that we have experienced peaceful transitions of government affirms our democratic temperament. Fellow Nigerians, true democracy shined its light on the daily lives of the people who live under its nurturing wings. It affords us the freedom and liberty to think as we want, live where we want, and pursue whatever legitimate endeavor suits us. Democracy does not assume some false or false unity of opinion. In fact, democracy assumes that conflicting ideas and divine opinions shall be the order of the day given the diversity and variety of the human experience. There must be diverse perspectives 
and few points. What democracy demands is that we do not resolve differences through force and repression, but we make allowance for the leg legitimacy of views that differ from our own. The other forms of government impose against the will of the people. Democracy aims to make leaders who conduct themselves as servants of the common good, not as viceroys of the narrow interests of the might. My dear compatriots, Nigeria faced the decision of untold gravity 25 years ago, whether to veer towards better destination or continue aimlessly in fog of dictatorship. We made the right choice then. We must continue with that choice now. As Nigerians, we must remind ourselves that no matter how complicated democracy may be, it is the best form of governance in the long run. We must also be aware that there are those among us who will try to exploit current challenges to undermine, if not destroy this democracy for which so much has already been given. This is the great battle of our day and the major reason we specially celebrate this day as Democracy Day. The true meaning of the day is not to focus solely on the great deeds of the past that have brought us to this point. Yes, we pay eternal honor to those who laid down their lives, sacrificing everything to pave the way for the nation. I stand uniquely placed in this regard. And I was among those who took the risk to midwife the birth of our democracy. I am now a direct and obvious beneficiary of the fruit of those historic efforts. As a president of this nation, I am morally and constitutionally bound to preserve this precious form of governance. I vow to do my utmost best to protect your rights, freedom, and liberty as citizens of Nigeria. Even more than that, I pledge to do whatever is necessary to cement democracy as our way of life. Although the challenges are steep and multiple, I am grateful to lead Nigeria at this moment in our history and point in our democratic journey. I come before you also to declare that our most important work remains before us. The real test has never been whether we will rise to the challenge, the sling of misfortune, and grievous pains of dictatorship. The real test is whether we shall lower our guns and fail to defend democracy as the shadow of despotism and its evident physical danger paid. I say to you here and now that as we celebrate the enshrinement of our political democracy, let us commit ourselves to the fulfillment of equally important counterpart, the realization of our economic democracy. I understand the economic difficulties we face as a nation right now. Our economy has been in desperate need of reform for decades. It has been unbalanced because it was built on the flawed foundations and of our reliance on revenue from exploitation of oil. The reforms we have initiated are intended to create a stronger, better foundation for future growth. 
there is no doubt that the reform has occasioned hardship. I feel your pains. Yet, the unnecessary repairs required to fix the economy over the long run so that everyone has access to economic opportunity, fair pay, and compensation for his endeavor and labor. As we continue to reform the economy, I shall always listen to the people and will never turn my back on you. In this spirit, we have negotiated in good faith and with open arms, we've organized labor on a new national minimum wage. We shall soon send our executive bill to the National Assembly to enshrine what has been agreed upon as part of our law for the next five years or less. In the face of labor's call for national strike, we did not seek to oppress or crack down on the workers as a dictatorial government of the past would have done. We chose the path of cooperation over conflict. Nobody was arrested or threatened. Instead, the labor leadership was invited to break bread and negotiate towards good faith resolution. Reasoned discussions and principled compromise are a hallmark of democracy. These themselves shall continue to animate my policies and interaction with the constituent part of our political economy. I take on this vital task without fear or fearful, and I commit myself to this work until we are built in Nigeria where no man is oppressed. In the end, our national greatness will not be achieved by traversing or traveling the easy way. It can only be achieved by taking the right one. The words of American President Franklin Roosevelt sadly ring true, and I quote, there are many ways of going forward, but only one way of standing still, and unquote. We dare not slumber, lest the good things awaiting our immediate future pass us by. We dare not plant our feet in the idle standstill in the middle of the intersection of hope and despair. We know the proper way forward, and we shall take it. The initial rays of a brighter tomorrow now appears on the horizon. An abundant future and our capacity to achieve that future lies within our reach. Democracy and the institution it begats over to take us to our profound destination. Let us board this progressive train together. And together, let us move Nigeria forward. Let's continue to keep the fire of democracy burning. Let's keep the torch lit for generations to come. May God continue to bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria and preserve our democracy. I wish us all Happy Democracy Day. <laughs>